Hello, I'm Andrew Claster, and this is the third annual Julia User and Developer Survey. We conducted over 2,600 interviews online this year. The survey was administered in four languages, English, Chinese, Japanese, and Spanish. We asked Julia users and developers, how frequently do you use each of the following languages? You can see the question text under the black bar at the top of the page. Number one answer was Julia. The percentage who say they use Julia a great deal has increased since 2019 from 56% to 62%. The number two language among Julia users and developers is Python, and then there are a number of other languages at the bottom of the page and a long tail of additional languages not shown. 78% say that Julia is one of their favorite languages, up from 73% in 2019. Python is continuing to decline, which is number two, is continuing to decline. Thinking about the tasks for which you use Julia, if you weren't using Julia for these tasks, what would you be using? Python is again number two, followed by C++, MATLAB, and R. MATLAB and R have been declining for the past two years. Most Julia users and developers started using Julia in the last three to four years after the release of Julia 1.0 in August 2018. Most Julia users and developers say they do at least 40% of their programming work in Julia. The most popular technical features of Julia are speed or performance, ease of use, the fact that the open source code is available and can be modified, multiple dispatch, package manager, etc. The most popular non-technical features, number one is that it's free. You don't have to pay to use Julia. And the next two are about the Julia community of developers, talented and active and warm and welcoming. Both of those increased significantly compared with last year. Evidence that the Julia community continues to grow and deepen. Biggest technical problems with Julia. Number one, takes too long to generate the first plot. Packages aren't as mature or well-maintained as I need. The biggest declines we see since last year, we see a significant decline in the percentage you say takes too long to generate the first plot, doesn't have all the packages I need, poor editor and IDE support, bugs, stability, maturity, package manager, and so on. The biggest non-technical problems are related to adoption. Colleagues, company, or collaborators use other languages, not enough Julia users in my field or industry, not enough Julia users in general, etc. Biggest decline is in those who say that the biggest problem is outdated or insufficient documentation and tutorials. Number one reason for Julia, using Julia seems like the language of the future. That has climbed over the last two years. Second is the elegance of Julia. Third is faster for the work I'm doing. Where do you interact with the Julia community? Up to answers are GitHub and Discourse. Most popular packages, bots, data frames, and some new packages added this year, benchmark tools, Pluto. Most say the Julia package ecosystem is somewhat robust. 74% say either very or somewhat robust. More users and developers have created or developed packages this year compared with last year. Most have downloaded or installed binaries from julialang.org. Best code with Julia plugin is the editor of choice for Julia users and developers. Big increase since last year. Also, number two is Pluto, new this year. Most say they do not use any cloud solutions together with Julia. Most common operating systems with Julia are Linux and Windows, followed by Mac. Just half say that they do not use any hardware accelerators. Among those who do, 
NVIDIA GPUs are the most common. Significant increase over the last two years in the percentage who say that the Julia community is very helpful and collaborative. JuliaCon continues to grow each year. The virtual conferences last year and this year have made JuliaCon much more accessible to more people. Most say they use Julia for research and for individual work. Most respondents are academics. Among academics, most respondents are graduate or postgraduate students or researchers. Among professionals, most respondents are engineers or developers. Most common industries among professionals, number one, software IT, number two, engineering, followed by finance. Among academics, most common fields are computer science, mathematics, and physics. Most respondents say they use data science as part of their work, increased since last year. Modeling and simulation also increased since last year. Most Julia users and developers have 15 years coding experience or less. Most are age 23 to 40. Also looked at Google Analytics in addition to the survey. Visitors to docs.julialang.org We've seen significant growth over the last two years in the percentage of visitors who are age 18 to 24 or age 45 and up. What is the country or region where you currently live or work? About a quarter say the United States. After that, Germany, China, UK, India, and so on. More than 90 countries and regions around the world. Again, we look at Google Analytics to see where website visitors are coming from. Similarly, we see about a quarter from the US, followed by Germany, China, and so on. I also asked respondents, what is the country or region where you are originally from? Uh, just 21% are from the US. 104 countries and regions overall represented. And the full list is on this page. Respondents are fluent in 59 languages. 90% are fluent in English, followed by German, French, Spanish, and then a large number of languages again listed on the page. Most survey respondents are white or Asian. 84% identify as men, 4% identify as women. But information from Google Analytics suggests that the visitors to docs.julialang.org are significantly more diverse. The percentage of women is 24%, which has doubled in the last two years. 5% identify as LGBTQ, 26% identify as underrepresented in science or computing. If you have any questions, please reach out to me. And this presentation will be available online.